Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here, and today I'm going to show you how I use the Westcott Optical Spot to create a stunning beauty image. Beauty photography is one of my specialties. And one of the things that helps me stand out is being able to have these tight, controlled slices of light on my subject. So my concept for this shoe is I wanna go for something moody, something glamorous, just a slice of light on my subject. And then maybe I'll play around with some patterns. I'm going to begin there and I'll let the shot evolve. So my first light, the very first light I'm going to use, of course, is going to be the optical spot and I'm going to use the leaves in the spot itself in order to create a shape that I think will flatter the subject's face. So let's begin there. All right, so what I did is I decided to close down the leaves to make a triangle that would go just over her eye. And the thought process is, depending on her pose, I can get both the eye and the lip in that light so it's really showcasing the beauty elements. And then depending on her angle as well, I might even catch a little bit of sparkle of the earring. So let's see what it looks like with just one single strobe. Okay. Perfect, so told real still the whole time. One of the things I love about this light is because it is so hard and it is so focused, it creates beautiful specularity on the makeup. So you can see those like little sparkles on her eye makeup and the shine on the lips. And I love it, but of course, so far with just one strobe, she's basically a floating head. So I need to do something to separate her out from the background. And so what I decided to do is add two strip soft boxes, one on either side of the frame. Now what these strip soft boxes will do is we'll kiss the side of her hair, the side of her neck, and it'll give me a little bit of separation on the jawline, make sure she doesn't blend in with the background, and it's going to show the beautiful length of her neck. So let's turn on those rim lights and take another shot. Perfect, and let's get that same exact angle. Right, that's perfect, right there. Great, thank you. Oh, I love it. All right, so, to be honest, I could stop here. Like this would be fine as a shot. The reason I like it, she's not blending into the background. You definitely know where the attention is on her face and that beauty. Uh, and so if you only have three lights, which don't get me wrong, that's plenty of strobes, I, I would stop here. But I'm feeling a little extra. <laughs> I'm feeling a little over the top. So I'm going to add one more strobe. The fourth strobe I'm going to add is just meant to be a fill light. That's all it's going to do, but it's going to light both my subject and the background. Fundamentally, the purpose of this light is to take those shadows on her face and give it just a little bit of fill, a little bit of detail. So you can make this really, really subtle, or I could overpower it, maybe add a gel. Like there's no right or wrong approach. It's about creativity. So I'm gonna turn on the 53 inch white umbrella with diffusion. Basically, it's a big soft light source so that the light hits all of the scene, the subject and the background, and just lifts the shadows just a little bit. So let's see what this adds to the scene. All right, as it is with this light right now, it looks good, but I definitely lost a lot of the moodiness. So I think either I would turn off that fill, go back to just the drama, you know, not a lot of fill to the shadows, or I would add a gel. And to be honest, since I want to go over the top and make this really, really dramatic, I think a gel is the direction I'm going to go. So I'm going to add a cyan gel to that umbrella. And remember, gels show up most in shadow areas, so it's going to show up on her face and in the background. So let's add the gel. Now, by the way, I know that gels eat up a lot of light, so I've actually turned up the power of that strobe because otherwise I think the fill will be a little bit too dark. So I've actually turned it up a stop knowing the gel just really absorbs. So now let's see how that blue looks. All right, 
this is much closer to what I was envisioning. So what we have is we've got that optical spot on her face and I've used the leaves to make a triangle just around her eyes and her lips. Then she's blending into the background. So I added the two strip soft boxes to carve her out and really give a beautiful kiss of light to her features. And then to add a little bit more, add a kiss of color to the scene, I've added a 53 inch umbrella with diffusion and a cyan gel to fill in the shadows. So those are my core ingredients. And then of course, it comes down to getting the right expression in the perfect pose. So let's get that shot. Okay, so can I get a little shoulder up? Perfect, just like that. Oh, I love that. Now lean this way just a little bit. I'm gonna get the opposite eye. Lean this way just a smidge, right there. Beautiful. Okay, and chin back. Good, let's go even more. Right there, beautiful. Long neck, great. Perfect, let me sharpen the edge even more. Beautiful. And now look your eyes over here. Great, let me just get those lips, perfect. I think this looks awesome. I would be super happy with this. I don't, I don't need to go on, but why not? <laughs> like, let's just play around. And in fact, that's what I try to do on creative play days. I set up a day to shoot to create so that I can experiment, try new things because you never know what kind of images you'll create and if it'll ever be useful for a client shoot. So I think the next step that I'm going to take is to make just only one change to this entire set. Instead of using the leaves on the modifier itself to make a little slice of light, what I'm going to do is open them up and then I'm going to add a gobo. And the gobo that I think is going to look pretty awesome with this setup is the Victorian gobo in one of the expansion packs for this modifier. I think it's going to look almost like maybe like a mask or like face painting. So let's add that to the look. Not sharpen it up a little. Beautiful. Great. Now let's take a shot. It almost gives me the look and feel of like a Victorian gate or some pattern where the light is kind of coming through, but then modernized and vintage modern or taking pieces of the old and adding it to the new is kind of my specialty. So I love what this looks like, but one of the things I'm paying attention to is those lines of the Victorian gobo. Sometimes they cross the eye. So what I'm going to look for as I pose her and as I get the shot is maybe where part of the swirl comes around her eye or maybe where she's catching the light because of course the eye is the most important part in this scene. So with that in mind, I'm going to get the perfect pose. Okay, so hold right still and chin to your left and let me position this right there. Oh, that's perfect. I can just perfectly see the eye. Everything's nice and sharp. Great. And then lean forward a millimeter. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Great. And then chin up. Perfect. I love the shots that we just created and it makes me really excited because this isn't just the Westcott optical spot. I actually partnered up to help design this modifier because I wanted to create a modifier to give people control that they never had before with studio lighting. Now, which one of these shots did you like better? Did you like the one with just a slice of light or did you like the one with Victorian Gobo? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. And of course, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe. Also, you should definitely pick up one of these optical spots because look at the results that you're able to get. And when you do, be sure to tag both myself and Westcott because we cannot wait to see what you create. See you next time.